in two classes this semester. You know, I only have so many stories. If you um, don't like the internet, and if you're in the witness protection program, you need to leave now because I'm going to record this class uh, and put it on YouTube um, for a number of reasons. A, I'm a narcissistic personality disorder, and so I enjoy watching myself over and over again. And not really, actually, I'm doing this for your benefit so that if you miss class, you can actually see it. And also because we're going to develop this class into an online class, and I find it so much easier for online students to understand something if they can watch a video. And so um, it's for two purposes. It's for your benefit so that you can watch class if you miss it, and also so that we can uh, use it for our online class development. So the class will be recorded. It will be put on YouTube. Again, if you're in the Witness Protection Program, I need you to tell me now because it's not going to end well for you. There's facial recognition software out there that will find you and the mob will come and you know, do horrible things to you if you owe them money or whatever it is that's led to your, your current predicament. So anybody have a problem with being recorded? Because not only will I be recorded, this class is interactive and you will also be on, uh, on YouTube as well. So you're going to be reality TV stars <laughs> right, right along with me. And maybe if I monetize it and you make some money off of it, I'll share the profits with you or whatever. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that, though. Although I do have friends that have done that. They've become YouTube sensations. They have their own channel. And they uh, I've got one friend who makes about $100,000 a year. And I can't figure out why anybody would want to watch him, but he does. So. We have to tell us what it is now so we can all use it. Yeah, I don't even remember what he does. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Brody O'Brien. You can Google him and find him on YouTube. Brody O'Brien. Brody O'Brien. Uh, He's yeah. from Guthrie. Anybody else from Guthrie in here? I've had a couple of Guthrie people from time to time. So. All right. So this is Marketing Ethics. And I am Grant Aguirre, and I will be your guide for the next 16 weeks to this fascinating world. For those of you who have had principles of marketing and have had sales, we talk about marketing ethics in those classes. This is my favorite class to teach, so we really go into depth in this class into the theory um, of philosophical ethics and its application to marketing. And so there will be some overlap from other classes that you've had if you've had me for principles or if you've had me for personal sales. And for those of you that are in personal sales this semester, you'll have to hear an abbreviated version of what we're going to do the entire semester in here. But this is really an in-depth course. This is a seminar-style course in that it's an upper division course, and we will do a lot of interaction in this course. It will be taught as a seminar uh, style, which means that I'll use a lot of the Socratic method, because Socrates maybe is the founder or the father of at least modern or at least Western philosophy. Um, and so I use a lot of the Socratic method. To that end, I have given you your first, I know it's horrible that I'm expecting you to work on the first day. I got slammed in my student evaluations for that. They said, he actually expected us to do something on the first day. <laughs> Horrors. I mean, my God, you know. You show up for work, they expect you to work on the first day, don't they? So think of this as your job. I want you to, A, put your name to begin with. I forgot to put a space on there for your name. Put your name on the sheet that I gave you. And not only is this a seminar class that will focus on theory, it's also a class that we will engage in living marketing or fully participating in marketing. We're not just going to have a class. I'm going to attempt to, in this class, engage in the actual practice of marketing and marketing ethics. And so each of you is a unique combination of factors and characteristics and you have unique strengths. Maybe the most important word in marketing today is differentiation. Product differentiation. In order to survive in a highly competitive market, businesses have to differentiate themselves. And you will have to differentiate yourself when you go out into the job market and make an argument as to why people should hire you. And so I want you to think about three of your greatest strengths and in a complete, coherent, and well-written sentence, tell me how you can use those strengths to market yourself. I'll give you about five minutes to come up with three complete sentences. That means you need a subject, a verb, and a predicate. I know this is not English, but marketing is about effective communication. So come up with those, and then we'll talk about part two of your critical thinking challenge.
<coughs> All right. So everybody got their sentences? Their three sentences? <coughs> okay. Very good. So, there are 30 of you, I would like to have five groups. So I want you to get into groups of five or six in here. This will be important because at the sort of end of the class, we'll have a group presentation, and you'll need to be in groups. Now, I recognize that what happens is you may not like your group. You start out, it's the first day, you may or may not know anybody in the classroom, and you may decide that you don't like any of them, and so you want to switch groups. You're welcome to do that at any point. You're welcome to abandon your group. You're welcome to vote members off the island and tell them to go away and find another group if you like. Um, but I want you to get in groups of five or six for today. Elect a leader. And based on these strengths, I want you to come up with a group brand or team name. A brand, branding is a huge uh, important part of marketing, so I want you to find a brand based on your strengths. And then we're going to play Marketing Ethics Survivor. <laughs> we're going to have your leader tell us why you shouldn't be voted off the Marketing Ethics Island. All right? So get in groups of five or six now. And make it loud in here. So if you want, you can go down the hall. There are some seats down there. Down by the marketing office, there's a nice little settee of four seats that you can choose to go in and, and work on. And I'll give you 10 minutes to come up with a brand name and then sell your group to the rest of the class as to why you should not be voted off the uh, marketing yeah, ethics yeah. Okay, so I know it's really hard to get on the first day, but it's important. <laughs> All right. We'll start with Ms. Weir over here. How kind of you. Sell your, sell your team to the class. Tell us why we shouldn't vote you off the island. Yes, stand up. Right? Yep, stand up. Okay. Our team is the Fantastic Four. We should stay on the island because we have a well-balanced team. We have an ethical person who's described himself as trustworthy and honest and all the all the good ethical things that you should be. You're saying this as you're rolling your eyes. <laughs> I know. I, I, you know. <laughs> well, he, he's, he's, the, he's the good one. Um, and then you have someone like me who's very assertive. I'm a go-getter. I get it done one way or another. I don't accept no. So that's, yeah. Uh, and then we also have two other teammates that can get along with anybody. Um, she, she has her name well out there. She's worked for her lots of companies and advertise for them, along with someone who, again, can get along with anyone, and he's kind of our peacemaker, and we all need those. So don't put us off the island. We're good. Okay, well, we'll let you stay for now. Yeah, no. Okay. All right. Yeah, and Mr. Hoover is, he is a good peacemaker. I mean, he's friends with Sheridan, you know, and that's, that's hard enough as that's, it is, so. It's pretty hard. Okay. All right. So you guys are safe for today. And actually, you'll be safe for Thursday because on Thursday we're going to do the pre tests, and that's all we'll do. So, you know, you got, got a whole week to come up with alert and chirpy things to say for next week. Okay. So, we are type A. Um, she keeps on the, on the island. Obviously, it's all in the name. Um, we're always dependable. We're always going to get the thing done, have people with a plan. And our tagline is you can always, always, always count on us because we will do the work when you don't want to. Okay, very good. Hard working, that's, that's important. Uh, we'll let you stay for now, right? Everybody agree to that? Good? Okay. All right. Let's see. Make sure I've got this group right here. All right. Uh, we're the Zellers with the Z. Uh, we should stay on this island because we all have really good personality. We're very sociable and get along with anybody. Uh, we're all goal-oriented and driven. We all strive for success. And then all of us were good at problem solving and handling objections. Okay, very good. And how did you come up with your team name? Uh, we're just trying to think of uh, words that we could spell it differently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> this team? All right. Okay, 
we are the success monkeys. Um, we're all kind of different. Actually, we're all like super different. I, my major is fashion. Um, she is like mar she's marketing, but she's all um, about being like goal oriented, going above and beyond, and um, communication. We're all really good communicators. We kind of came up with, but um, over here we have like the video game player. Um, I really don't know anything about it. He was like trying to tell us, and um, then we have like going above and beyond. We all kind of go above and beyond, so we're kind of like monkeys in that way. We're just kind of swinging from branch to branch, and you know, so, um, we're okay. Because in the end, we're gonna be really successful. Okay. <laughs> All right. And you're a fashion marketing major? Yes. Okay. And marketing minor and art minor. Okay. All right. So you don't you know you don't have to take this class, right? I actually do. I it was the only one that was available. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I had to have nine. That's always nice to know. Yeah, I didn't really want to take your class, but it fit my time slot. So you know, hey. All right. So stand you this. can stand right there. All right. We're the ineffectuals, like entertaining and factual, like two nice synthetic balances because we discovered that we have a nice ability to take large amounts of information and synthesize them down to be very easily dis, uh, like suitable like out to common people, um, like very punctual and very polite people, website development, humorous. Um, on time, hardworking, like mechanical engineer type of person. So, like people you want to keep around um, for your island adventure. So. <laughs> I, I like how you. There's a negative sale there and an insult to your customer. You know, like keep us around because this is really hard, and you people are dumb, and we can explain it. To you. <laughs> That's kind of what you said. <laughs> All right. Vicious and delicious. <laughs> um, just like the name, we're vicious, we're very goal oriented, and uh, we have different members with uh, different sets of skills. Some who are experienced in the real world who have uh, experience in uh, actual marketing, as well as uh, different like photography, as well as collaborations with different uh, companies. And so, with our skills and our experience, we feel like we can provide uh, <coughs> good services to uh, towards the class and hopefully. <coughs> Okay, very good. I like the alliteration. That's, that's always important, you know, to have the alliteration there. That's good. Okay, let me... <laughs> okay, so good job coming up with names. If you decide that you don't like your teammates at some point in time, you're welcome to change. You're welcome to find another group. Uh, but it's important that you start thinking about this early because if you don't, we get to you know week uh, 10 or 11 and students say, I don't have a group. So at least you have a group on the first day and if you don't like the group, you would know that you can change the group and you can vote them off the island or vote yourself off the island and move to another group. But it's important to start thinking about that and start thinking about these group projects early so that you don't procrastinate and at the last minute think, oh my god, we got together a group project, what are we gonna do? Um, there's probably nothing worse in the world than being read to, unless you're a three-year-old child in preschool. But I am going to read the syllabus to you so that you know uh, what it is and that I gave it to you. And I'll have 30 witnesses if you file a great appeal that say, you know, yeah, in fact, he did give us this document. We saw it on the first day and he went over it and told us what was sort of going to be expected in this class. The courts have treated this as a contract. It's actually not. If you've gone to law school, you know what a contract is. And contracts are something that are negotiated. But the court has said it's contract-like, or the courts have said that it's contract-like. So this is the um, sort of organic document for our class that will go by. And students ask me, uh, how do I calculate my grade? Well, it's in the syllabus. I have to say that a lot anymore. I don't know why. But So I'm going to go over this, particularly the really important parts that I want you to highlight. <coughs> Mark, underline, put an asterisk by so that you can remember this. Uh, to begin with, the course is 4353, so it is an upper division course. 
it's a 4,000 level course, so you have to have so many 3,000 and 4,000 level courses to graduate, and so this satisfies that requirement. And the CRM, in case you need to drop or something like that, is listed on the syllabus as well. And you get three credit hours for this class, and that's important because you've got to add those credits up to get to what? You should, this, you should know this. How many, you all are getting close to being seniors, right? At 124, you got to get to that magical number so that you can walk across that stage with the funny, you know, mortarboard on your head and black gown and get the degree that says you're educated. The phone number that I give you there is my cell phone, and during the course of the semester, I'm not actually playing with my phone in here when it looks like maybe I am. I use it to control the camera, so I look at my cell phone a lot. I'm recording the class again so that you will have it. If you miss or if you just want to go back and listen to my plangent rantings after the, uh, the hour is over, if it suits you, or maybe it's a good way for you to go to sleep if you suffer from insomnia at 2 in the morning to you know, get out the YouTube and watch the, the videos from this class. The phone number on there is the cell phone. I give that to you because it's uh, more convenient for you to call my cell phone or text me than it is my office phone. Nobody ever calls my office phone. And the one that I have in my faculty office doesn't actually tell me that I have a message. And so it's better for you that you just have that number than, than the office phone if you want to text or send me an email, things like that. My office is in Thatcher Hall, which is immediately south of here and 340. It's the building with the large gun that you can see right out, or well, sort of, you know, it's obscured by the lovely 1950s decor that we stuck on the outside of our building there, but it's got the large building with the gun and the ROTC sign. Don't be afraid of the gun. The ROTC department has assured me that they pulled the firing pin out of it, so it's not going to go off and, and shoot you. You might have to deal with them because they're on the second floor of that building when you go over to see me. So if you go in that north entrance, which is in that uh, northwest wing there, there's a door or there's a stairway immediately to your left if you go up that stairway. My office will be on the third floor, second door on the right. It looks over Thatcher Lake, which is nice because it's a nice lake view for me. Nobody ever comes up there. It's very lonely, so you know most people want to send me a text. My email is jgary at uco.edu. I try to respond to emails as quickly as I possibly can. I also serve as the university's chief Title IX investigative officer, so I receive a voluminous amount of emails a day. And if I don't respond to you, please just send me a text message that says, hey, I sent you an email. Can you give me, uh, can you give me an answer and I'll get to it as quickly as I can? Because it's, it's very easy in that number that I get every single day from administrators and other departments on campus as I'm working through cases to, to get those lost. And this is my primary, this is the part of my job that I really like and it's the primary function of my job is teaching you and I want to make sure that I get your uh, questions answered quickly. My office hours are, it's a god-awful hour from 7.30. I know you don't think the sun rises at 7.30, but once you get to be about 40 years old, you start having insomnia and you're up all hours of the, so I might as well be here. So my office hours are from 7.30 to 9.30 and then I start teaching and I teach back to back from 9.30 until 1.45 when this class ends. Um, so if that time is not convenient for you, please let me know and I'll be happy to schedule an appointment that is at a time that is more convenient for me because I realize that 7.30 is an ungodly hour that most people are not you know, even functioning at, but I am. Um, again, the disclaimer of this course may be recorded and uploaded to the internet. If something happens to the camera, I may not upload that day because, it, I don't know, it's been acting funny recently, but for most of the time, this course will be uploaded to the internet. And again, if you're in the Witness Protection Program, uh, you might want to find another class. Course description. This course provides students with an overview of major ethical theories. The student will apply these theories to contemporary marketing situations and case studies. So this is largely a kind of case study course and a seminar we'll talk about various fact patterns and how we apply rules to those fact patterns. Um, managers and executives in marketing and business are forced to deal with ethical dilemmas on a regular basis. This class is different from every other class that you've taken on a college campus and that it is combining not one, but two things that you have been exposed to from the moment you were born, or maybe even before you were born. Marketing and ethics. Even before you were born, people were marketing to you. I got invited to a baby shower this last weekend. 
I'm not sure about this, guys being invited to the baby shower. It's a relatively new thing. But I got invited to this baby shower. And so I go to this baby shower, and you know, the kid is not even born, and we're marketing to them. Why do you have a baby shower? So people will buy stuff for your baby. You register at Babies R Us or Target or whatever, and people buy stuff for your baby. So even before you were born, you were marketed to, and there are ethical implications to that. And so you've made ethical decisions uh, from the moment you were able to make rational choices. You've made ethical decisions, and you've been marketed to, and you have marketed yourself in various ways. That's one of the reasons I do this first exercise, because you're going to have to market yourself and go out and get a job with these strengths that you have and work with other people. And so this class combines not one but two things that you are constantly engaging in. Making ethical decisions. Every time you <coughs> interact with another rational human being, you face ethical dilemmas. Even if it's just how you should treat them. You know, should you show them respect and say hello or good morning or uh, you know, good day back? Or should you, should you talk to the person at the counter at Walmart or the pharmacy that you pick up your drugs at. So it's important, so we face these decisions and it's important that we know how to evaluate these decisions and evaluate the problems from a rational, comprehensive perspective. Because I think a lot of times what we do is we engage in the gut check on ethics rather than really thinking through the problems. Upon completion of this course, the student should have gained an understanding of how to analyze ethical situations. We'll talk about a methodology for analyzing ethical situations and problems and be able to arrive at concrete solutions to those problems. Um, I don't want you to turn the page when I get to the bottom of this because this is really important. Uh, course measurement. The student should be able to, without references, intelligently discuss the various ethical theories and apply those theories to contemporary marketing and business solutions. Don't turn the page. What does without references mean? Without looking at your book, right? If you've gotten on RateMyProfessor.com and, and looked at the reviews on this class, which I suspect some of you have, you probably know, that two of the major exams will be take home. I put without references in there because, A, the final, because we use it for assessment purposes, is actually in class and it is a closed book exam. But the other two will be take home exams and essay in nature, and you don't have to uh, not use your book. I'm going to let you take them home. I expect you to use your book. I hope you'll use your book and other resources that may be available to you. Before I got my PhD, I was a lawyer. I was the university's associate general counsel, and then I was chief general counsel for a publicly traded company called the American Education Corporation. And I let you do this and take these tests home because nobody ever said to me as a lawyer, I want an answer to this question, and I don't want you to look at those books on your shelf. Or I don't want you to get on LexisNexis. And so a lot of what we do in a college setting is really an artificial construct that is not at all indicative of what you will do in the real world. Right? In the real world, when you solve problems, you're going to do what? You're going to go to the internet. You're going to Google it. You're going to look at Wikipedia. And even though college professors tell you you shouldn't look at Wikipedia, one of the things that we know from research is you know the number one place that they start when they start their research now, that they go to? It's Wikipedia. Now, they're not citing it in their scholarly articles, but they are going there. It's maybe a good starting place. And so you're going to look at these things, and so I want you to actually think about these issues critically and be able to look up answers and, and talk about them so that you can really wrestle with them. And so the two exams, unless you really annoy me and I, I think you're not at all participating in class, those two major exams will be uh, take home. The final will be uh, an in-class closed book exam, but it's 50% of it is totally your opinion. It's uh, something called the Ethical Position Questionnaire, which measures your ethical ideology. And so we'll start with a pretest on Thursday, and part of that pretest will be an ethical position questionnaire. And then you'll have 50 uh, questions that are multiple guests on substantive marketing uh, theories and their application to real world examples through vignettes. And then um, we'll have that same exam at the end that will take so that I can use it for assessment. But 50% of it will be made up of the EPQ, which is your opinion, which means that you already start with the 50. So you only have to get 10 questions right to get um, 
into a 60, which is a D in passing, right? <laughs> Ds can get degrees, actually. So, uh, look at the goals and competencies for student success addressed in this course. The University of Central Oklahoma is committed to transformative learning. I don't know what that means other than I think they want me to engage in edutainment, at least that's what they seem to say if you go over to the Center for Transformative Cheating and listen to, to the guy over there that they seem to think knows something. I, I think personally all education is transformative in that if you didn't know something and you can apply that and you've done something else at the end, that's transformative. But to that extent, uh, this course does actually provide you with those things uh, that the university wants us to focus on. Things like discipline knowledge, we'll talk about an interface between ethics and marketing in this class. Research, uh, creative and scholarly activities, you're going to do a little bit of research in your group project and your uh, article review. Service learning and civic engagement, global and cult cultural competencies and health and wellness. Um, so look at those three goals. The College of Business has specific student learning objectives and this class is uh, designed to meet all of those. So for example, one of the learning objectives is each student will write a professional document, you'll do two. One is a group and one is an individual. There will be an article review assignment and then a group project and presentation. Develop a professional presentation, so as part of the group project, you will develop either a PowerPoint, Prezi, or some other kind of professional presentation and present it to the class. Demonstrate professional behavior and business interactions. You'll do that again through your group work on a weekly basis and then also through the presentation. To recognize different leadership styles. So what we'll do is we'll rotate your leadership positions in your group. So I want you to, to pick each week a different group leader to present on your, on your behalf and you'll look at those different leadership styles and be able to manage teams, develop critical thinking skills. This class is all about critical thinking, right? It's really, really hard. This is the stuff that I really like students really don't like, particularly when we talk about theory, but it really is its great in terms of developing those critical thinking skills. Philosophy as an activity really does force you to do that and, and come up with better solutions. Analyze global factors relevant to business. We obviously operate in a global environment and that's part of it. Uh, critically assess ethical arguments in business. Be able to identify sustainability, that's a huge issue. We are doing colossal damage to our planet. And how should we engage in sustainable business practices that will allow us to continue to live on this planet comfortably for years to come? And then uh, demonstrate core business knowledge. As, you, as some of you have had me for principles, you know my favorite phrase is marketing is the, oh what? What is it? What's my favorite phrase? Marketing is the only fully integrated function of the firm. Unlike accounting, no. do you need accounting to own a business? No, you don't. Right? You, you, can, you can start a business. People start businesses all the time and have zero accounting skills. They know nothing about double entry bookkeeping. Debits on the left, credits on the right. It may not be a terribly successful business, but people do it all the time, particularly in third world countries. Can I start a business without finance? I can, right? I have what? A law degree. I can hang out a shingle without, you know. And if I, I know a guy for years and years and years that practiced law by his office telephone was the pay phone at the shoe shine in the Oklahoma County Courthouse. He'd sit there and get his shoe shine every morning and answer the phone, talk to his clients didn't have an office, didn't need any finance for that. But you do need marketing. You need to be able to sell yourself and provide a, uh, and provide a service. And so marketing works across not only with external constituents, but also with what? Mm -hmm. The internal, right? We use the account, accounting numbers in planning and forecasting. And we use finance in order to develop products and things like that. And so marketing is the only fully integrated function of the firm. And so this course will help you uh, develop and demonstrate core business knowledge. The course outline, I put this as subject to modification. That's because if something happens like 
Google, what is Google working on? What is Google working What's their big project? Self-driving cars. Self-driving cars. They say that we'll have self-driving cars in the next. They've actually tested a prototype of a self-driving car. If that happens, we might want to talk about that rather than, you know, I don't know, employee relations and marketing. Um, so I might switch this up if, if you have an interest in something. Um, but pretty much that's the, the, the way we'll go through the, uh, the semester. But I do say that it's subject to modification so that when you file a great appeal and say, well, in week six it says we were supposed to be talking about modern theory and he was talking about the Google self-driving car. Well, that has huge implications. What kind of implications would Google's self-driving car have, for example, for marketing and ethics both? If we have self-driving cars, what happens? There would be no uh, more taxi drivers. There would be no more taxi drivers? I don't know. If ever you might still not own your car. I mean, I think they're going to be pretty expensive. A lot less accidents. Maybe there will be a lot less accidents. That has ethical implications, doesn't it? Or maybe there will be a lot more. <laughs> if, if, if the program used to write it is really bad, we could have even more accidents. But let's say it works really, really well. What are some other things that that has implications for in terms of marketing and ethics? Other car companies. Other car companies? Can they compete? Does it put people out of business? What about one of the biggest things? We fund our court system in Oklahoma largely off of DUI. Did you know that? We, we largely fund, if you have self-driving cars, what happens to the DUI fees that we charge? That's gone, isn't it? In theory, right? Um, so that has huge implications, both ethically, legally, socially, you know, environmentally. Um, so uh, I don't want you to say, you know, we were supposed to be talking about modern ethical theory, and he was talking about this self-driving car, so, but pretty much we'll go through that. We will start the first, uh, there are two texts in this class, I chose two texts that are relatively cheap because I appreciate the fact that students are poor. You can get the rule book for, of arguments for probably three dollars or less online, you don't even have to have the current edition. If you don't have the current edition which has rocks on it, you can use an older edition, it's pretty much the same, the examples are the only thing that will change and you can use that. And then the other one is the Des Jardins Business Ethics textbook that we'll look at. I use a variety of instructional methods such as lecture, multimedia presentation, Socratic method, and guest speakers. I use the Socratic method because A, this is a philosophy style course, and who is the founder of Western philosophical thought, maybe? Socrates. It's also the preferred method of law schools. So it's you know, what I sort of had my training in. Um, there will be one pretest worth 30 points. If you complete the pretest, you get full credit for it, even if you totally vomit and don't answer any questions correctly. Uh, there will be in-class group critical thinking uh, exercises that will be worth 70 points. There will be three exams, and they will be worth 70 points. So uh, like for today's critical thinking, I'll probably make that worth five points. If we get to 65, I'll average them, and then it'll be a full 70 points. The exams will each be worth 100 points. Uh, there are three. Uh, one first exam and then sort of a midterm. There's a midterm exam, which is the first exam. There's an exam towards the end and then the final exam, which is comprised of the EPQ and the marketing ethics questionnaire, which is a substantive review of, of marketing ethics and knowledge. Um, you'll have an article review that's worth 100 points and I provide a rubric if you turn to uh, Roman numeral 17 uh, in the syllabus, there's a detail on that, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, and then also a group <coughs> project, which will also be worth 100 points. So there's 600 points total, and I give you the breakdown. What time does this class end? 145. 145, okay. When you teach back-to-back, -back, you sort of forget where you're at. Attendance, uh, it's incumbent upon you to come to class regularly because we'll do a lot of group work and also there's a lot of interaction between myself and you and then other students. So you have three free absences after that. I'll deduct 50 points from uh, your class score. So you don't want to miss. However, I recognize that life does sometimes happen. Things happen, you get sick and so 
I will be happy to excuse absences as long as you have a reasonable reason for the absence. If you have a school function, for example, we are going to take six students this semester to the National Collegiate Sales Competition in Kennesaw State, Georgia. And so if you go to that, if you're part of that team, because I see a bunch of sales students in here, Mr. Holhausen, you've had advanced, Mr. Thalen, you've had advanced professional sales. Are you, are you all going for the, for the team? No? Um, I usually have at least one student that's interested in that. Obviously, I'm going to excuse that absence. If you're sick, this is the time of year when the flu hits because we have cold weather and you decided not to get the flu shot. I don't know why you do this, but you decide that you're going to forego the flu shot and you get sick, I'll excuse that. Please don't come to class and make your fellow classmates sick and for God's sake, don't do this. I have students that do this every semester and even though I say this, they do this. They, I'm sitting in my office and somebody will show up bloodshot eyes, nose running, something dripping out their ear, and, and they'll say, <laughs> I'm sick, and, and I didn't want to come to class. Oh, so you came to an even more enclosed spot, my office, and decided to infect me. I, I realize that you think that college professors are like Venus born of the foam, and therefore we are immune to your you know, diseases, but we're not. So, you know, just send me an email, text message, give me a call, and I'll excuse it. So there's a means, I'll use a rational basis test, means, and lawyers love rational basis tests, so you have a means to an end. And there should be some connection, some logical connection, which we call a nexus between these two things. You know, if, you, if you're sick, it, I, I have animals, I have three dogs, five cats, and three horses. I don't have kids, those are my children. I will push any one of you under the bus to say <laughs> one of them. <laughs> so if your dog dies, I'm going to understand that you, you know, you're sad. You may not want to come to class that day. If your child is sick, I am going to understand that. You know, I, just send me an email. Now, if you wait till the end of the semester and you have 20 absences, I'm, I'm probably going to think that maybe this is ex <clears throat> post facto justification or rationalization for those. But, you know, so send me an email when you're, when you're actually sick or close to there or miss class, and I will probably excuse it. Dishonesty, um, just read that. Any missed exam or article review has to be made up within five working days. The University of Central, this is this statement. When I was Associate General Counsel, I wrote this statement, the ADA statement, so that is a, that's a brilliant piece of prose right there that you should, that, that's in every, in every professor's syllabus, you should read that. Um, look at the university's semester deadlines and policies on the academic affairs information sheet there. If you go, this syllabus is uploaded in D2L, and if you go to D2L, that hyperlink should take you to that. The article review assignment, we'll talk more about that, uh, but there's a rubric for that so you can see how it will be graded and the point breakdown for that, and then also uh, the group project and the due dates for those. So the article review is due on March 1st. And then the group projects are due uh, on April 5th, and we'll start with group project presentations. What we'll do for the group projects is, in order to make it fair, I'm going to draw lots. So as we get closer to that, I will draw lots for the, the order in which you will present. And unless one of your group members has something going on, um, we'll just go in that order so that it's absolutely equitable and fair. And nobody says, well, I, you know, they went first and got a better grade or whatever. It's all just by luck of the draw. Any questions? Okay, well, I didn't quite make it to 145. If you are morally offended by that and you think that I'm cheating you, you let me know. You come to my office, I'll be happy to talk to you. Or we can stay late on Thursday. No?